This crowd rises to its feet. But Toro slammed it home. Darwin left wing. Three ball. Perfect. Darwin in front of the lane. Lobbed the only pow. And Allen blocked the shot at the rim. Pow with the left hand and a foul. Welcome to the Chase Down Podcast, part of the Cavs Media family. I'm your host, Justin Roan. Support for this podcast is brought to you by Fubo TV. Watch over 100 channels of live sports and TV for half the cost of cable. There's no contract and no commitment. Try for free at FuboTV.com. We got a great podcast for you guys today. And joining me is my co-host, Carter Rodriguez. Carter, how you doing, buddy? Oh, I'm doing well, Justin. Basketball. Cavs basketball is back tomorrow. We, we got we got Wimbenyama playing tonight. <laughs> It, it it's feeling real again. I am uh, I I have been counting down the days to a preseason game in a way that I'm a little ashamed of. Uh, you and I'm be, man. and I'm feeling great. It, it's Christmas Eve, man. Uh, preseason basketball is just around the corner, and and we're going to start to see some of the uh, the fruits of the labors for these guys to see the hard work uh, that they put in throughout the off season pay off. And we have a perfect guest that I'm very excited about to help break it all down, break down all the off season work and what goes into that process from J A M J M R Basketball. It's Jamal Richardson. Jamal, how you doing? Man, pretty good, guys. Man, just you know. You know, blessed and fortunate to to be on the on the chase down pod, man. You know Justin and Carter, man, the big dogs of the chase down. So you know, excited about being here with you guys. <laughs> you, you flatter us. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming on. And honestly, I appreciate you giving us the lifeblood of the off season, which is the off season hype videos, the workout videos, all every all the content you put out, like that, water in the desert, Jamal. That, that gets us through those really lean days. And for those that don't know, uh, let, let people know ab- about what you do and, and some of the uh, the names that you work with. Yeah, so I'm uh, from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, been doing basketball training for over, over 10 years. Uh, was in, 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 in business with my cousin Spencer Richardson, uh, who is the founder of All Around Game Basketball. Um, we've been working together for quite some time, but uh, been doing this for 10 plus years, man, and, and been blessed and fortunate to to really work with a lot of guys. You know, obviously, you not you guys know, you know, Darius, of course, and uh, Dylan as well, but also uh, Robert Covington for the for the Clippers, oh. Garrison Matthews mm-hmm. for the Rockets, uh, Damian Jones of the Lakers, um, and the list, you know, goes on and on, man. So I'm uh, just excited, man, and, uh, you, know, you know, I'm just, you know, really thankful to be able to do what I do and uh, never feels like work, man. So I, I enjoy, I enjoy my time as a trainer. I enjoy um, the process and the grind of just helping these guys become better players and I'm um, just making sure that I'm supporting them also, you know, on and off the court as well. Well, we really, as I said, we appreciate your time and appreciate the the insight that you provide because I, I got to know, while we're on the subject on kind of those off-season runs, how much structure goes into the runs we see on social media? Because obviously, you know, there's the individual skill development side of the game, but then learning to play five on five is obviously a different discipline and and that's something that's very valuable as well. When we see kind of those, those highlights of those five on five scrimmages, how much structure actually goes into that aspect uh it, it's it's a lot that goes into it uh, it's not a situation where we just kind of you know just roll the ball out and let the guys play uh we want to also emphasize that they're you know they're you know being able to you know work on the things that they really apply um during off-season workouts but also too um still being able to find a niche and, and work on the strengths of what's going to help them uh, be successful in the nba season um and also to you know uh, overseas as well because we have a lot of overseas guys that play as well, so it's really, really structured. Uh, so we really emphasize playing the right way. Um, you know, making sure the guys are competitive. Uh, they're really pushing each other, challenging each other, and uh, more importantly, man, it's the, the energy and the, and the excitement. And you know, you can only do so much training. These guys want to compete. You know, so we want to make sure we're providing a safe, uh, but a competitive, <clears throat> competitive environment for for them to be able to sharpen their tools, sharpen their game, and be able to to, to really attack and work on things that they, they want to concentrate on in the offseason. So you mentioned you work with uh you you've worked with Darius for a while. How, how did you meet Darius? How did that relationship grow uh, over the years? Yeah, so when uh, Darius actually moved to Nashville, I think I want to say the sixth or seventh grade, um, and I had a chance uh, to meet you know Winston and Felicia, his parents, um, through his AAU coach, and also through a mutual friend Terry Sean Wall, um, and so that's how the relationship started. Um, you know, Winston was, you know, he was, you know, he was, he was, he was really protective, you know, so he came <laughs> for the first couple of workouts. It was almost like a, 
like an interview to a certain degree. But uh, man, after he saw like the you know first you know the first workout and you know, the first couple workouts, man, he just uh, you know really put that trust in me, man. And uh, more importantly, I think it was you know Winston and Felicia really believed in me as a person um, and just knowing that I would be a positive influence on Darius, not just for basketball, but just in life as well. Uh, so that's, you know, that's how that, that, that relationship sparked, man. And uh, we've been rocking since, man, from sixth grade up until this point, and, you know, and that's for a lifetime ago. So, uh, you know, I, again, to me, it's like hitting a lottery, uh, you know, again, not just because he made it to the NBA, but more importantly, man, just the, the relationship that I was, I'm able to grow with him, you know, and that's a little brother and I'm proud of him and um, all the hard work that he's put in to put himself in position uh, to be where he is within his career is great. Um, and he still has a lot more to do, man. He's, he's, he's definitely motivated. Um, you know, he's definitely, um, he's about winning, you know, so that's always been the thing that he's been pushing, man. But I'm extremely proud of the growth he's made, and we're going to continue to just rock and uh, try to get 1% better every day. You mentioned uh, that, you know, you had to kind of win over his family as a person, and I think we all, you know, we've seen television, we've seen movies, we we know that the, the youth, the youth uh, sports scene can be kind of a, a grimy place sometimes, how do you, how do you kind of, you know, uh, how do you kind of instill that trust, uh, in, you know, cause obviously you're working with kids a lot of the time and how do, how do you instill that trust with the parents that like, Hey, I'm actually here not to make a quick buck or just to capitalize on your kid's talent, but to actually help grow and have a partnership. Man, I think it really falls into you being, uh, being genuine. Um, and like you, like you mentioned, Carter, man, not, um, not looking for an incentive, you know, not looking for. Uh, something in return for monetary gain or anything to that degree, man. When, when you genu- when you genuinely care, um, and you genuinely want to invest and see a child do well, uh, you're willing to go above and beyond and see them be successful. Um, I just feel like whether he, you know, made it to this point or didn't make it to this point, you know, that our our relationship was going to be a lifetime relationship regardless. Um, and sometimes, and as you mentioned, man, it can be a it can be a very devious, devious aspect of, of youth basketball, man. And it's, you know, it's almost like, you know, you want to latch on to whatever you get to that has the potential, has the potential, has the chance to really, you know, go far. But um, a lot of, a lot of times it doesn't happen that way. Um, and so, you know, Winston and Felicia, I think they're great. You know, they're great, have great judgment of character. And, um, and one thing they, you know, one thing they are, they're going to be protective of their, ch- of their child, you know? And so like gaining that trust is very important. Um, and just knowing that, you know, it's, just, it's more to it than basketball. You know, it's bigger than that. And so uh, I think by me being able to uh, to show them that, hey, listen, I'm here, you know, f- for the long haul, no matter what. Um, and that's that's what they – I think that's what they believe in. That's what their core values represent. And we, you know, we all are just one big family. And I appreciate them bringing me in as family. Um, and that's, I call I call them mom and dad. You know, what I mean? <laughs> so that's, 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 so we really have a, a, a love, you know, and a, and a deep, genuine family relationship. That's one of the things that I, I noticed uh, having followed you now for for a little while, and obviously trying to you know consume all the off season clips. Like you do, still work kind of through that grade school level uh, athletes, you call collegiate athletes, uh, pros as well. How important for you is it for you to be involved in kind of the grassroots? Uh, grassroots basketball development in Nashville and be that kind of uh, presence in the community. I think it's a, it's important, man. I think that's a part of my journey and my process, and that's, that's what's made me who I am today. Um, and that's something that I always want to make sure that I'm, uh, I, I stay in touch with, I stay intact with. I love working with kids. I love uh, the fact that they, you know, keep working with kids helps, with, helps me with patience and helps me with being able to um, allow them to grow, allow them to make mistakes and allow them to, you know, celebrate their success. Uh, so to me, it was when I got to this point of, of elevating and being able to work with, you know, NBA players, I I, I never wanted to uh, make sure I disconnected from what got me to where I am. Uh, and when I started, I started working with kids. And that's going to always be in my core, man. I just love uh, the innocence of kids. I love how they come in with uh, with the right mindset and mentality of just wanting to get better and just for the love of the game. Um, and that's just a passion that I have, man. So just working with, making sure I'm continuing to work with, you know, youth in middle school, high school, college, um, you know, those, you know, at each barrier, at each level, um, I really feel like played an important part of me, of me being the person that I am. Um, and it's always evolving and growing. I, I, and believe it or not, I tell, I tell kids that I work with all the time, there's a lot that they don't even realize that they're teaching me. Um, and so that's, that's one thing that I've always kind of just hang my hat on, man, is I'm always wanting to evolve and learn. And so, um, you know, going back and making sure that I'm, I'm staying connected and staying rooted through them, 
Um, and it's cool to see um, that bridge to be connected to a lot of these guys that I work with, man, they, they definitely spend time and they give back, you know, they give their time back. They're giving their knowledge and their resources back. Um, so just having kids come and watch workouts and having, the, you know, having the guys come in and talk to the kids. And uh, we have some college guys that play in our program. So even, you know, having those guys being able to take them under their wing and kind of just helping them show the ropes and giving them advice on and off the court. And I think that's, Kind of that's the beauty of basketball, and that's what you know the ability that it has to just really be a vessel and connect people, and that's what makes it so unique, and that's what makes it special. What is the difference? Obviously, you know you're working with a college kid, you know maybe a D, you know a D one level talent. How how do you approach a workout with a college kid versus a workout with Darius this summer? Like, is it just more advanced stuff? Is it just a higher expectation of quality? Like, how do you build, like, kind of personalized plans to grow these guys? Yeah, I think it just really, um, it falls into, just into their skill set, man. You know, you know, college, you really have to be, um, you know, really more efficient um, just with the, the style of play. Um, it's, it's really, you know, you, you can play help side defense. And uh, so you really got to be efficient and really getting the spots and, um, and just really understanding your role kind of plays in a similar aspect of, of, of the NBA, but, you know, obviously when you, you know, it depends on what your role is. So a guy like Darius who's going to have the ball in his hands a lot, but also to be able to play off the ball. So we have to, you know, really make sure we're like really targeting and locking in on things that um, that's going to help propel him, not only for himself, but to help, you know, to help elevate the team as well. Uh, but yeah, definitely like for college guys, it, it, you know, just I'm really just depending upon kind of what your role is and what your strengths are. Uh, and I just want to make sure that you're efficient because uh, you really can't get uh, to that next level without being efficient, without being a high level and a, a high IQ basketball player, uh, you know, because efficiency is, is a really, really high value in the game of basketball. So I think in both aspects, those correlate, but it's just kind of different just based on what their roles are. So I want to make sure that I'm predicating things around a workout regimen that really fits what they're going to be able to do, uh, but also too, I still want to give them a space to be creative, not overdo it, but just enough because again, basketball is such a reactionary game. So you really can't predetermine anything. You got to kind of be able to just make quick decisions and, and be, be able to react on the fly, you know? So I want to still make sure I'm giving them a space to create, but I'm not allowing them to overdo it. But a guy like Darius who has the ability and skill and the talent level to, you know, kind of just think of things and just really play off a natural instinct, you know, we try to make him, you know, make his workouts a little bit more challenging, a little bit more, uh, you know, game like and realistic as much as possible because there's just going to be so many things thrown at him. And so we just try to keep him just on his toes and just keep him, you know, just keep him really sharp, you know. So it's it kind of, it kind of, it's, there's a lot of similarities, but it's, there are a, a few differences for sure. Well, what about going into an offseason where a player maybe just got drafted and they're making that transition from college to the NBA? Is, is it uh, do you have to adjust kind of your approach based on what their own expectations are for that NBA season? Because it's interesting. You, you'll you see guys that they get drafted high and there's the expectation, right? They're, they're going to shoulder a lot of responsibility. They're going to be a driving engine for their team, even if there's going to be growing pains. And then there's other guys where they're probably going to be a complementary piece, right? Like their, their responsibilities are a little bit different. But then there's also the outliers like I. I but prior to the Donovan Mitchell trade, I, I went back or and looked at his draft express profile and it was three and d guard basically right like it's the expectation is oh yeah you got this role player like it, it might be like a young eric bledsoe kind of thing and then he makes that transition and oh he's ready for a whole lot more do you kind of tailor your approach with these guys making the transition based on what their perceived role is going to be or is it kind of rounding out their game and let's see where they fall within the nba hierarchy once they get there yeah, I think it's I think it's the latter part. I think it's kind of just rounding out and see uh, just to see where you end up because you know situation is everything. Um, and there's a you know and and it's one I think that's one of the things is you know being successful in the NBA is just being in the right the right place in the right situation at the right time. Um, and sometimes you know sometimes the NBA can you know put you in a box. It can put you in a specific role and how how teams, how GMs, coaches, organizations look at you. Um, so I take their approach to just, you know, rounding everything out first. And then once they kind of get their footing in the door and they're kind of being able to prove certain things and just, you know, more importantly, I just want you to get your foot in the door first and foremost. Uh, so just carve out, a, you know, carve out a niche, carve out an opportunity to, 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 to showcase who you are, but more importantly, to be able to hold a position, you know, in the NBA. And then once you kind of, 
you know, fall into that place, then we kind of just really become more centric on focusing on those things that's going to keep you there. But I still want to make sure that you still have the ability to do other things. Um, and I try not to, you know, it's almost like studying. You don't want to cram and do everything at one time, but you kind of want to just take bits and pieces and kind of just, you just grow and evolve naturally over the course. And then as your role changes and just depending on situation, this is, you kind of kind of tailor it and, and make sure you're you know being able to modify on the fly too, modifying and being in a place to where you can help guys kind of add things or maybe take away things. But, um, but I, I like to start off, you know, being able to work on a little bit of everything first. Um, I'm not going to give you too much, but just enough to, for you can, you know, kind of show who you are. And then once you kind of find your niche and you find your role, we're going to make sure we're great at those things. that's going to keep you there. And that's going to give you the sustainability and the durability and the longevity to stay in the NBA. But in the meantime, we're still going to, you know, work on things that, that can, you know, that can, you can kind of take bits and pieces and, and kind of add it to your game year by year. Listen, you lost me on the studying comparison. I got through school cramming and then forgetting I, everything. I was and, say, I cram and, like you know, I, I, I'm a big believer in cramming, uh, <laughs> even though there are no long term benefits whatsoever. So, you know, I think you lost me there. But, you know, overall, well, he, he didn't a pretty good me. answer. He, he was waxing poetic about this. And I'm like, that's such a like a nice, healthy, balanced approach. And then I'm just uh, imagine back to, imagine being healthy. Couldn't, the, the, couldn't the be me. Night before cramming. That's what it was all about for me. <laughs> I, I do. I, I do want to ask, because uh, you did mention kind of what organizations look for. And, you know, that is the other side of this. You know, it's you, oh. you, you work with Darius, you work with Dylan, but there's also an entire Cavaliers coaching staff that has their own ideas about what Darius should be working on, what Dylan should be working on. Is there any communication there? Does Darius come to you and say, Hey, here's what coach, here's what, you know, coach Walton wants, wants me to work on or like, or is it, you know, pretty church and state in terms of, you know, div division of, of labor between, you know, coaching and development in the off season versus co developing within the season with the Cavs coaching staff. I mean, I think it's, it's been so cool. Um, you know, you know, having a relationship with the with the coaching staff. So I've been in contact with, you know, J.J. Outlaw. Uh, I talked to him um, almost every offseason. Uh, so we make sure that we're in accordance and, and along the same lines of, uh, of making sure that, you know, what they want him to focus and lock in on, um, you know, for the for the quarter offseason. But at the same time, they still allow me to kind of, you know, be who I am too. Um, and I, and that's just, I think that just comes with trust. Um, and I appreciate um, I appreciate those guys, you know, just having that trust and, and faith in me to be able to, you know, help their guys get better. Um, and then also too, like Mike Garrity, I think last last offseason he came down for a couple of days and worked with uh, Dylan and, and worked with DG. So just, you know, we got to, you know, get in the lab and work together, man. So just having that relationship and that communication uh, really helps a lot. Um, and that's just, again, you know, I always look at it as a, you know, it's a village. It takes a village. You know, it's always a big thing. So it's not just my way of thinking. And again, you know, these guys are playing, you know, for this organization. So I want to make sure that um, I'm upholding my responsibility, my, my responsibility and duty and making sure that the things that they want them to lock in on, we're going to make sure we make that the core and the centric of, of what we put into our workouts in the off season. Um, and so, man, those guys just having a great relationship with them, man. And they're, I mean, just fantastic. And, um, and you know, the, and as you can tell, man, those guys, you know, the, the team, they just buy into to that staff, you know, the, the, the job that JB has done and, and what they've done and, and over the over the course of the couple of years, man, and rebuilding this thing has been fantastic. So, um, yeah, but having that open dialogue and having that open relationship with those guys helps a lot. Um, and I'm always open to learning. I've learned, uh, you know, I've learned so much from them um, and, and just being able to watch and then also being able to assist and help out. And at the same time, they still allow me to have my voice too. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a very healthy relationship, man, and it's – it's something that just more importantly, it's about the players. You know, we want to make sure that players are getting everything they need to be the best version of themselves. It, that's really encouraging to hear because obviously from a fan perspective, you want to make sure that like you hope that everyone's on the same page, right? Like you're working towards the same goals inside and outside of the season. And I mean, Carter and I also know the value of clear communication. Uh, and we get that from our sponsor, Zoom. Support for this podcast and the following message comes from Zoom. Half a million businesses connect using Zoom, a single platform for phone, chat, workspaces, events, apps, and video. Zoom enables real-time collaboration for teams around the globe, zoom how the world connects jamal i got a question for you um it's 
one of the kind of interesting uh, trends or uh, coincidences, I guess, unfortunate coincidences with the two Cavs players that uh, you train with the most uh, in Darius and Dylan is both of them have kind of overcome uh, injury issues. Uh, Darius obviously uh, coming uh, th- off that meniscus in college took him a little while to kind of regain that confidence, regain uh, his physical ability, that burst that we saw in those games at Vanderbilt. And then Dylan now, uh, you hear in media day talking about how he feels the best he has uh, since he was at Belmont and that he, he's got his confidence back. And I saw I saw you tweeting out the Dylan hype videos and I'm, I'm happy for him. Uh, anyone that's been through kind of a, a, a knee surgery or any surgery at all knows just how grueling that process is. How rewarding is it for you having developed these personal relationships with these guys to see them kind of overcome those injuries and regain their confidence? I think it's a it's a beautiful thing. Um, you know, particularly, you know, you know, Darius, you know, when he um, you know, first towards meniscus coming out of Vanderbilt and um, you know, just having that rough stretch his rookie year. Um, you know, once one of the things we always talked about, that's you know, that with with injuries, man, it brings a lot of adversity. Um, and that was his first significant injury. Um, and so that was a, a time within itself for him to really kind of self-reflect um, and just really just kind of figure out, you know, just how to get overcome it and uh, just taking a day at a time. Because as a competitor and as, you know, as a basketball player and, you know, having that love for the game, like it was just eating him alive not to be able to, you know, play his, his freshman year. But also, too, just going through that grueling process of rehab. Uh, you know, you start to second guess and doubt yourself. Am I ever going to be the, the same player that I used to be? Um, but that's when it just comes down to your trust and faith, man. And just really, you know, believing in the things that, you know, things are going to fall in, in play for you as long as you, you know, have great faith and maybe you just put, you know, put forward 1% better every day and just working on being a, a, a better version of yourself. Um, and with Dylan, man, this is the first off season. He's been fully healthy and I'm just super excited for him. Um, and again, you just, you can kind of see in like the spurts and a couple of times when he plays in the season and then, you know, something happens to him. Um, and then, you know, so just going into this offseason, man, it was just really, really, really excited for him to be healthy. Um, and I think while healthy, man, he can, you know, be a be a huge, you know, contributor to this team. Um, and I think just really, you know, we spent a lot just really talking about his mental. Uh, we spent a lot of conversations after workouts, you know, just talking about, man, just being that version of Dylan that, that the cast fell in love with um, going into that 2019 draft. And it's the reason why they drafted you because they believe you can play. They believe in you. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's now just, you know, him just being able to just get back to, you know, the Dylan Willard that we all know. Um, and then just showing, man, just showing everybody what he can do. Um, but just, again, going through an offseason where you're fully healthy and not having to rehab. And, you know, rehabbing takes away time for you to really get better. It takes away time for you to put the hours in the, in, the, in, the, in the necessary means to really just work on your game and work on your craft. So now, you know, we was able to go into it. And this was his first – Summer actually being able to play in the, in the pickup runs as well. I think he really needed that the most. He really needed to play. I think he needed to play a lot this summer. Um, so that, and it was great for him to uh, be able to do that. And um, I'm just I'm super excited for him, man. I'm definitely always going to be in this corner. So I'm, I'm excited about what he's going to be able to do. It it's actually kind of you know I don't think even. I realized that he wasn't really able to play in pickup runs during the summer. And, you know, like, especially for a a guy with a, you know, a reputation as a shooter, like, you know, like Dylan, when it's such a rhythm thing, it's such a routine thing. How much do you think that lack of routine has contributed to him having some up and down stints when he has been able to get on the floor this year or uh, in his career? Yeah, I think, I think you just said the best part of man is their routine. Um, And that, you know, having a routine and, and a level of consistency of doing something, um, that's um, embedded in you. That's a part of who you are. Um, you know, when that's taken away, um, it's tough. It's very tough. Um, and I'm a just, I'm just a huge believer in, in, in not only just working out, but you got to play. I feel like you got to play um, and just get, you know, get in that summer environment, man, and just really just being able to, you know, go against other, you know, your other peers and counterparts and, and just really developing and growing that confidence. Uh, so even at the, even at the summer pickup games, like I'm, I'm yelling at him to shoot everything. I told him to shoot the ball. So everything. are we. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't look to pass. Like, oh, you know, shoot. You know, sh- I encourage that. Just shoot bad shots. But just, you know, more like just wanting him to grow the confidence and just, you know, the aggressiveness of, of, of being able to utilize his greatest strength. And, and he can shoot the ball. Like, he's a really good shooter. Um, so now not being as passive, but just being really, really, really confident, man, and just letting him go. And even Darius. Um, you know, they played on, you know, I made sure to put him on the same team a lot, but you know, Darius was always in his ear about shooting. 
you know, and he would get pissed off when he wouldn't shoot the ball. But um, but I think Dylan, you know, and again, just having that, that consistent routine, you know, we're in the gym, you know, four or five days a week, you know, twice, three times a day sometimes, like, you know, developing that that flow, developing that rhythm over the offseason has really, been, you know, being able to help him be, you know, mentally at a place where he feels, you know, great about himself. Um, and, and really just, man, going out there and just, just, just you know, getting back to having fun too, man. You know, so, you know, injuries can take that away. Take away the fun of basketball. So I feel like, man, he had a lot of fun this offseason. He really worked his tail off this offseason. And so now him being able to get into that routine and the rhythm and the flow, especially as a shooter, um, you know, being able to get a lot of reps up, I think he's going to be able to really showcase what he can really do. It's funny that you that you mentioned Darius uh, telling him to shoot because we spent the second year of Darius's career yelling at him to shoot more. <laughs> the, these dudes you coach, they're too unselfish, man. How do you get? How, how much do you, are you talking to them about those kind of tendencies? How did you have those t- talks with Darius where you're like, "Yo, they're going under on a pick and roll, and you're Darius Garland. You have to pull, take that pull up, even if it's early in the clock." Absolutely, man. That was, um, you know, and again, it's kind of, you know, by default, man, because he's always been uh, such a playmaker. And it's funny because going into the draft, I think a lot of people didn't think he was had the ability to be the playmaker that he is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, um, and and you know, and I've always, you know, believed, you know, that's the strong one of the strongest part, if not the strongest, the strongest part of his game. Uh, but I just had to kind of tell him, man, like the more aggressive you are, it's going to just open up your playmaking more. Uh, so you got to be willing to take shots that they're going to give you. Uh, and the fact that you're a pretty damn good shooter too, you know what <laughs> I mean? And so <laughs> based on percentages, like, yeah, your coaches are encouraging you and they're giving you the green light. Um, you know, you got to be willing to take those shots, man, and not be over consumed about um, the perception of it because naturally you're unselfish players. You know, you guys play the right way. You're going to get guys involved. You're going to play the game. Uh, you're going to play winning basketball. So that's not even a concern, but, um, I think your aggressiveness and, and you tapping it to your skill level um, at an aggressive level is going to just make life easy for everybody else too. Um, and prime example, I mean, you look at it with Steph. I mean, Steph is the gravitational pull he's able to have on defenses because he's just naturally aggressive. But again, he allows his IQ. He allows to, to you know to do the little things to help make the game easy for everybody else, man. But when you're that aggressive, um, it, it just helps a lot, you know. And so I think you know, so seeing him go from year two to year three. You know, the all-star year, that was, you know, that was one we just hammered, just aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. And I'm telling that same thing uh, to Dylan, man. I'm, I'm like, shoot the ball. Like, just let it go. Like, they want you to shoot. Because, um, again, that's what you do. And if you don't do that, then, you know, you hurt your team. Like, you're hurting your team by not doing the thing that you do well. Um, so, so I think I think, I think it's, it's, it's hammering in, man. And if not, I'm going to, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to bug them. I'm going to annoy them until you get sick of me. But, um, but that's what's, that, if that's what needs to be done to help, you know, to help us win, and get to those playoffs, man, and make a run, and so be it. I'm, you know, we're gonna do that. We're gonna make that happen. Yeah, it, it's funny because both of them, as Car- both of you have mentioned, like they have that trait, right? And it, it seemed like early in Darius's career, it was okay. I'm trying to like not rock the boat. I, I'm trying to play good team basketball. And the same things there with Dylan. Like every time that he's got a run with the Cavs, Carter and I are like, we're like impressed about by his basketball IQ, his te- how his tenacity when he's rebounding. Like he he's a fantastic rebounder for his position. Uh, but he's passing up these open looks because he's trying trying to get a driving kick going when that'll collapse the spacing. How, how helpful is it for someone like Dylan to have Darius around who's kind of gone through that same process and uh, started to see kind of the, the reality that by being more aggressive actually opens up opportunities for your teammates as well. Uh, it helps a ton, man. And, and I think Darius has, um, you know, his leadership has, has, you know, taken, has grown leaps and bounds. And so, um, and it helped that they had a prior relationship, you know, obviously with BG at Vanderbilt and Dylan at Belmont, you know, they were already familiar with each other as is before. Um, so, you know, Darius, you know, being the one to to really encourage him and, and, and being in his ear, but also like you just mentioned, Justin, just sharing that experience of how it was like to, you know, kind of just be passive and not, you know, take the, not have that aggressiveness um, and, and being able to, you know, to understand and dictate. And as, as a point guard, you know, if your point guard is needing you and telling you to shoot, like, hey, listen, <laughs> take heed, you know what I mean? And because, again, that's going to help open up, you know, open it up for Darius to even be able to feed the, you know, feed the wealth to everybody even more, you know what I mean? So um, so I think having, you know, Darius going through that, and that's why I think, man, sometimes I've always been a big, big, a big believer that you go through certain things for a reason. Um, and him, him going through year two, 
uh, year one and year two and being able to find himself, being able to to really tap into the player that um, that that we were all envisioning and that we all knew, you know, that, you know, that our team, that our camp knew that he was. And, but he had to do it for himself too. You know, I think he just had to, he needed to go through that. And so him having that experience and now being able to kind of share that with Dylan um, and, and helping Dylan, you know, be in that same boat and Dylan's trying to find himself and navigate on who he is as a player. Um, you know, that's, it's, it's necessary sometimes. So Dylan going through what he's been going through and, um, you know, just praying that he has a great, you know, a healthy season, a full season. But again, just being, you know, being able to be that player that, like I said before, man, that the, that the Cavs fell in love with Belmont, man. It's funny, I was watching him play uh, in the NCAA tournament, man. They played Maryland. I was watching his highlights. He had 38 points, and it was just – He was, he was just a shooting. monster. Yeah, it was a monster, shooting unconscious. I even showed him film um, from his from his first summer league game. Dude, was I just, was about to mention that one step back yeah. that was like a 35-footer. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and I was, I was showing him that a lot over the summer. I'm like, man, Dylan, like, this is you. Like, this is who you, this is who you should be. This is who you are. You know, so now just – you know, just just go out there, man. Play free, like just just let it go. You know, just if the coaches tell you to stop shooting, that's a that's a different ball game. But I'm pretty sure they're not going to tell you to do that because that's I'm, I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical. Yeah. And, and and the nice thing is, you know, those opportunities are going to be there, right? Like throughout right. the course of a season, even even if you know the rotation is a little tight at the start of the year, you're right. going to get your opportunities. Guy guys are going to miss time, and it's always been just such a. It seems like such a healthy competitive environment that the Cavs have, where there's a lot of guys that bring different things to the table, and they all kind of push each other. So uh, I I have no doubt that if Dylan's put on in the work that uh we're going to see him get those opportunities throughout the course of the season and i mean i'm i root for the Cavs to to have good problems right like i I want all these guys to do well and and whether it's with the team or it creates an opportunity for them somewhere else like i'm rooting for these guys because you get invested right like from a fan perspective i i i care about all the guys that come through the team i root for them when they end up on other teams it's it's just nice to see them overcome that adversity and come into their own Sure. No question. I wanna I do wanna ask about Darius the person a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, uh I, I think the stereotypical leader is the is, you know, the, there's a lot of those kind of scowling, barking orders kind of leaders. It doesn't really seem like Darius is that kind of guy. He kind of seems to lead through positivity. What can you yeah. kind of speak about him as a leader? Uh man, he's he's one of those guys that uh, that everybody loves to be around. Uh, you know, really silly, man, lighthearted. Um, yeah, he's definitely going to lead through action, uh, but he's just a, just a great person, man. And the people just, he has a natural energy of just gravitate people towards him. Um, I know he spent a part of this offseason, early in the offseason down in Miami, uh, working with Ronnie Taylor, Taylor Sports Group. Um, and that's when, you know, uh, Darius and Donovan first linked down in Miami. They worked together through Ronnie Taylor. Um, and and by the way, Ronnie did a fantastic job too with helping with his development this offseason as well. But uh, but Ronnie had called me, man, and he said, man, you know, man, he said, I don't know what it is about about Darius, man, but it's just like the kid is just he's you know, he's just special. He's just got just his his natural glow to him and his his ability to be able to just pull people in and like people just love his energy. Um, and I think that's um, been the thing that he's been able to kind of really captivate and really grow on. I um, mean, he's always been that way since he's been young. Um, he's the type of person, man, that'll uh, walk into a gym and may not even know you, but will speak to you. You know, he, he makes sure he acknowledges everybody, man, and just make sure everybody's presence is felt and just knowing that um, they're appreciated. So I think he's just always been that type of player, man, that just has an ability to pull people together, um, not necessarily through, you know, being rah-rah. But he, and once he has gotten better, you know, he's, he's grown into that a little bit, but I think his has always been more about action. Um, and, and been more, you know, more about pulling people together, man, through his energy, through his spirit. Um, so I think I'm proud of him and the growth that he's had, you know, that he's made vocally. Uh, but man, he just, a, man, he's just an awesome kid, man. And he's super silly, like super <laughs> duper funny. Like he's hilarious. He's really hilarious, man. Like he should, should take up comedy at some point. Like he's just that funny. Yeah, he's I, funny. I, I saw the emoji TikTok that, that cracked me up. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> he definitely let him know. Uh, how 
how has this off season with him been different now that he's kind of made that leap, you know, kind of established himself as an all-star and as a max player and kind of like the face of the franchise, has that changed kind of how he approaches the off season? Like, do you, do you sense kind of like a, okay, I've got that off my back. I've, I've shown everyone who I am now let's take it to another level. Like how has the approach changed uh, this off season? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been, it's been that, um, it's been that hundred and as year two after we're going towards the end of this the season for year two, um, he called me late night. I was thinking it was like two or three in the morning after a game. Um, they were, I think they just got back to Cleveland. He called me man, at two or three in the morning. And um, that's, you know, and that's when he played extremely well after all-star break in year two. And I think that was the moment when he realized that, you know, I can be one of the best point guards and one of the best players in this league. And they say, I want, you know, I really want to take this thing to the point to where I'm I'm at that level. I'm at that supreme level and even more. Um, I think you know, him making the all-star leap and him accomplishing what he did uh, was just a, a huge indicator for him um, that, yeah, I, I want to do more. So that was, you know, he had his foot on the gas um, this whole offseason. Again, like he spent his first part down in Miami working with Ronnie Taylor, and, um, and, and they just really hit the ground running. And he came back for the back half and just really just, I mean, put in an overdrive, I mean, in the gym two, three times a day, uh, just really, just really getting after it. Um, I think his approach has been now, you know, now he's a target. He's not, you know, he's not a guy that's, you know, under the radar, or, you know, people know him now, you know, so he's going to be getting uh, people's best shots, and especially at the toughest position in the league, at the point guard position, you don't have any knife saw. Uh, and that's one thing that he's always, you know, again, from year one to up to this point, he knows that, you know, every matchup is going to be a dog fight. You know, so just being prepared and being ready. But now, um, I think what really motivated him the most, man, was really just that playing, that playing situation. Like he was extremely pissed. Like, I mean, just to the point where it just ate him alive. So that's been just a huge motivating motivating factor for him. That he, you know, he appreciated the experience of making a play in, but he wanted more. Uh, he wanted more for this team. And you know, when he's, I think he said in the interview, like he expects his team to go to the Eastern Conference. Like he really believes that. Um, it's not just a thing of just putting it out there for, for you know, for PR or anything. Like, he really believes that. He's just that competitive. And he really believes that, you know, we have the best team in the Eastern Conference. You know, so not even being settled and content on making a 2C, 3C. Like, he's, he's shooting for the top. You know, and I believe you got to have that confidence, man. I mean, that's what it takes. I mean, you can't be – you can't feel inferior. You can't feel like you're not good enough to, to match up with these teams. And, of course, like experience and things – plays a factor, but I mean, you look at the run Memphis made, nobody expected Memphis to do what they did last year. Um, you know, Boston over the years, uh, when they first made it to the Eastern Conference Finals without Kyrie, like nobody expected them to be in that position, but those guys believe, you know, so I think that's the thing that 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 he's always been about, man, and so I think we got a great team assembled. Uh, Kobe's done a great job, you know, the coaching staff, they've done a fantastic job of, of really, you know, putting this thing together, man, and so now it's, it's go time, but for him, he's like he's he's possessed. Like he wants he wants to win. He wants to he wants to get Cleveland back to the you know back to the finals and being champions. That's his mission. Yeah, I I talked on our last pod uh, with uh, the guys from Wine and Gold Radio about like health, good expectations and bad expectations. And sometimes like you can expect to be great and not kind of, and kind of feel like it's just going to happen, especially in the aftermath of the Donovan Mitchell trade. Uh, yeah. Or you can have high expectations, but know like, oh, I got to go up another level. It's not just going to happen at a, at a linear level just because I showed up the next season. It, sure. It's it's super encouraging to hear um, Darius that he was so pissed. You know, you got <laughs> you you want to hear that. You want to hear that because I think it would be very reasonable. And I think even a part of me, if I were in that situation, would be like, hey, I'm doing good. We're on we're on the curve up. You know, what? like. We, that's why we're podcasting. That's why we're podcasters. Uh, Also the uh, marginal athleticism. Um, But, you know, I think like, I think that is a a reasonable thing, a reasonable thing for your brain to do, which is to say, Hey, we outperformed expectations. This next year is all gravy. As long as we're, we're kind of back where we were and, you know, sure. The Donovan Mitchell trait changes that, but it seems like that wasn't, that was, that didn't change Darius's expectations uh, for you know the rest of this team is that fair to say that's very, very fair to say and i think just because of you know obviously health being a huge factor into uh us turning out the way that it did last year but i think when you saw a fully healthy Cleveland Cavaliers team you saw a team that was really really dangerous 
and a team that really, really believed. Um, and so, um, and again, I think just it's easy to kind of fall into the to the leniency of like you just mentioned, Carter. Like, hey, we, hey, we, 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 we made it to the play in, and uh, but that's I guarantee you that was not on his mind. That was not on that team's mind. They wanted to make the playoffs. They wanted to get that playoff experience, and like that was their only mission. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so he was really, really pissed. And I think also too, man, it, it's no guarantee. Uh, I, you know, it's it's it's, it's you know, as in the NBA, man. Like so much can happen. And it's, it's no, you know, you can't get too comfortable with your window, you know. So I think you always have to play with the mind frame of, you know, we want to be, you know, we want to maximize this as much as we can um, and not be content, not be too content on um, on just, you know, settling, you know what I mean? But um, I think you do have to kind of, you got to kind of balance it out. You got to kind of leverage it. I think for these players, though, I think these players, they go into it with the mind frame that they want to, if they can do it now, they'd rather do it now. And I and I, I I'm a big believer in that as well. But also too, um, that you you know you're gonna have to you know trust your process, be patient with it. Uh, but don't don't get too relaxed, don't get too lenient because again, it's no guarantee. You know anything can happen. You know so um, you know while the opportunity strikes and while the iron is hot, you know hey let's 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 go for it, let's shoot for it. I mean this is this is what we're here for. Uh, but just you know but, but being able to handle things, you know not getting too high, not getting too low, but just staying level. You know, just staying level, man, and being able to just handle everything that comes along with it. Um, you know, at some point in time, man, everybody takes their lumps before they become champions. You know, they take those, they take the tough losses, they take the tough hits, uh, they take the tough battles. But, um, but you need though, you need that, you need that, you need that experience. You need those those moments uh, to be, you know, to be on top. And there's still no guarantee for you to be on top. But you know, while you had a chance to, man, like just go for it. And I think that's always been his mentality, man. Like he always, he just wants to win. You know, that's just always been an important measure to him you know and, and you know I think you know being labeled as a great point guard you gotta be able to win you know it's, it's no different from a quarterback you know quarterbacks are, are, are really you know known not only for their talent but their ability to you know elevate their team through wins and losses so it's the same mindset I'm um, at the point guard position and it's something he he wants to do he wants to win uh, I mean I thought I couldn't get any more excited for this season, but now, now, now it's going to another level. And, and obviously, like he became an all-star because he had such a well-rounded game. Like what, what I found so impressive was he elevated his scoring, his playmaking. He even improved on the defensive end of the court. I thought he showed real kind of strides on that end last year. In his off-season training with you, is there something that you kind of identified that he's kind of taken that skill set and taken it from good to great? Like, is there some specific area where you kind of expect to see a progression this year um it's off ball um off ball movement um again we kind of you know we, we got a chance to really kind of dissect and watch a lot of steps um just his ability his movement and his conditioning as well um he really took you know really took on that challenge of being you know being conditioned and really taking care of his body and really adding a little bit of muscle and you know be so being able to you know, try to hope, you know, being able to navigate screens better on the, on the defensive end and being able to hold his ground um, against those, you know, against those bigger guards and, and, and ma- uh, different mismatches and things that agree. But really, man, this is off ball movement. Um, I think his, you know, his shot creation has been just fantastic and his ability to be able to create his shots and now um, just, you know, being even more, you know, being more efficient with his movement. So that's something that you'll, you'll see improvement on. Um, I think the huge growth that he took last year was his, Utilizing his, his his second level scoring, his mid range and his floater, um, that's really you know been a been a, a key a key part of him being able to be um, at a at an unguardable pace. You know, being at a place where he can just get to spots and being able to score it off you know three levels, and then that, you know now him being able to shoot the, the deep ball at that fourth level. But um, the off ball movement is something that I really feel like is going to open up a lot more for him. And again, with the addition of Donovan. Um, him not having to really feel like he has to carry the load on an offensive standpoint in terms of creation, um, and then have an ability to like to say play through Ev, you know, playing through Donovan, and um, you know being able to free him up a little bit more to, uh, you know, to be able to be even more efficient. You know, one of his goals he wants to go 50, 40, 90, um, and so I think that's something that you know he, he's really going to push for. You know, he's really going to you know challenge himself to do that. And I think he has a great ability to do that with the pieces and components that have been put in place. Um, so now just being able to unlock the off-ball movement even more and uh, being able to just showcase that more, uh, I think you'll be able to see a lot of that uh, this season. 50-40-90 is a good thing because uh, my favorite comp for Darius is Steve Nash. So I, I, 
I, I, th- I think that would be a great thing for him to emulate the 50, 40, 90 king himself. I do want to drill in on the off ball stuff a little bit, get a little bit more into the weeds because, you know, that's a g- part of the game that people really do not imagine. I don't think when people think about trainers working with players, I think they're thinking about dribble combos or shooting drills. What kind of work goes into, uh, you know, improving someone's off ball game? And is, is it about change of speed? Is it about, you know, coming off screens? But like, what are, what are your main focuses in developing that part of his game? Yeah, I think, yeah, man, ability to change speeds for sure. Um, and just making the right reads, uh, being able to read the defender um, and, and seeing how they're going to guard. Um, again, and, and all of that, is, again, is predicated just on, um, your aggressiveness, uh, but just being able to you know pick up on things like small, the small nuances, the angles, and again where the defenders are going to you know are they going to lock and trail you, are they going to play inside, are they going to push you? It's like route point. running for a wide receiver almost. Absolutely. So we did a lot of that, man, and so we probably you know we try to make it as realistic as possible, um, you know, for him to to catch it off, you know, catch it off the move uh, to get into shots, but then also too if the shot wasn't initially there, um, also just working on playing out of touch action. Uh, so not being able to, uh, for defenders to be able to pick up on his rhythm when he dribbles and things to that degree. So he's not having to work as hard off the dribble, but now he's just using this movement to to create not only for himself, but using this movement to create for teammates. And again, I'm going to go back to Steph. I mean, his ability, his gravitational pull, his ability to pull defenses to just key on him because of his movement, you know, and you know, guard Steph man is like running a marathon, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, so he, and he, you know, and one, you know, one wrong move is going to open it up for his entire team. Um, and so I think, you know, just going back in and just really just picking up on those things. And, and again, I think with the compete, the pieces and components that he has, it's going to really help him to be able to open up that part of his game. And that's going to make it a lot easier for himself and for his team. Uh, before, I know we're, we're running uh, out of time here. And I wanted to ask you about uh, a quote that, that's been going through social media today. Uh, and it was that clip of Giannis uh, talking about skills. And saying, you know, being a pro player is not just about skills. Uh, I saw you retweeted it. And how much did that that kind of quote talking about all the work that goes into it, all the, all the intangibles that goes into it, how much did that resonate with you as a trainer? And, you know, it, it feels like that felt like a very Jamal Richardson type of quote. Yeah, man, it's, 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 um, it's, it's huge because, um, you know, there's a lot of skilled basketball players that don't end up tapping into the player that could potentially be. And a big part of that has to do with mentality. And I think Giannis, I mean, Eli, I mean, I think he explained that perfectly. Um, it's the the that desire, the the edge, the you gotta be damn near crazy, uh, you know, be called crazy, but that's what it takes to reach that level of greatness. And so, um, you know, having an ability is great, you know, having skill is cool, but I think if you don't have the mentality and the mindset and the and the hunger and the desire of wanting to be one of the best, if not the best, and wanting to be able to just have an advantage over your component every day. But that's what make the grace the grace. That's what make Mike Mike. That's what make Kobe Kobe. You know, and even Giannis. And then Giannis said it himself. He said, listen, I'm not, you know, I'm not the most skilled and I'm not, you know, I'm not the, you know, I don't have the prettiest game, but it's my it's my possessiveness. It's my desire. It's my passion. Like it's it's me wanting to just, you know, just be, I just want to be great. And I'm willing to do anything and everything, just having that level of obsession, man. And I think, you know, you're able to put the two together. You got a dang, you have a very, very dangerous combination. Uh, but again, there's been some guys that have been successful uh, without having to be a skill and, and, and their, and their desire. And again, having that obsession, I mean, I, you know, like a, a Dennis Rodman who just had an obsession of just playing hard and just wanted to rebound and just do all the dirty work. Like that takes greatness, you know, that takes a level of sacrifice, you know? And so, um, I think, man, that's 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 huge. I think the mentality, the mindset is, it it, it can make you or break you. You know, what I mean, I really I really feel that way. It can make you or break you. So, um, I think Giannis said that perfect, man. So, hey, listen, all you hoopers out there, you know, yeah, you work on your game, you can be skilled, and 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 you know, definitely, I think that's important. But definitely, man, just had that mindset, had that desire, just had that hunger. That's, that's I think that's what's gonna separate you. Well, I, I mean, listening to you tonight, it makes a lot of sense how the, the guys that you've worked with have had so much success and continue to work on their games and improve on and off the court. Uh, it, it's it's another piece of the puzzle, and, and we really, really do appreciate your time tonight. Uh, before we wrap this thing up, uh, is there anything you'd like to let the listeners know about? Uh, plug uh, your socials or anything like that? 
Yeah, man, just on Twitter, um, JMR Basketball, on Instagram, um, JMR Basketball. Um, again, man, I really appreciate you guys. You guys do a fantastic job of Cavs coverage, man. I don't miss an episode. Um, I'm locked in every. I'm, I'm locked in on every episode on the Chase Down Pod and on on Lockdown with Cavs, man, with Evan and Chris as well. So I I listen to those guys as well, man. But you got you guys do a great job. And again, man, this you know, preseason tomorrow. I, I know everybody's gonna be super excited. You know, see that product, man. See. Um, you know, see what you see what we're gonna do, man. I, I really feel like we're gonna have a great year, and uh, I'm looking forward to it, man. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and it's good to be back on the winning side. I'll tell you that. You know? uh, that's, yes, that's, 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 absolutely. The vibes going. They got to keep the good vibes going. So I'm excited for sure. As Darius said, the vibes are immaculate and you help contribute to that. So thank you so much, Jamal. Really appreciate it. Appreciate all our listeners as well. Yeah, if you're tuning in on YouTube, like, subscribe, click notification bell so you know when we're going live. If you're listening via podcast, leave us a rating, leave a review, subscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe, and help cook those books. If you want to be part of Chase Down's exclusive Discord chat, send a screenshot of that review to chasedownpod at gmail.com. However you choose to support us, we really do appreciate it. Make sure you guys are staying safe out there. Until next time, go Cavs.